Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over an example in Excel that will show you how you can do a scenario analysis uh, for a capital budgeting project. Scenario analysis essentially refers to how the NPV or the IRR or the payback of your project changes under different situations or scenarios where these different scenarios potentially reflect different values of the underlying uh, inputs. So maybe uh, you're expecting your discount rate or your initial investment to be higher or lower um, than your base case. Then how would that affect your NPV or the IRR? Well, uh, the scenario analysis is exactly that. And it turns out that in Excel, there is a function uh, called uh, the scenario manager, and that can be used uh, very effectively to do this. And so I'm going to show you how you can do that. So uh, consider the following example. This is a company called McMaster Golf and it's considering investing in a new line of golf clubs. And uh, there is some information given to you which basically suggests that when the company is going to sell these new golf clubs and the price and the expected sales are given, uh, two things are going to happen. One, uh, it's going to sell less of its existing high-priced golf clubs. Uh, however, you are also told that the company will also sell more of its uh, cheap golf clubs uh, also. And additionally, you're told that the company has already spent about $1.2 million in R&D. And earlier in the question, you were told that the company has spent about $160,000 on a marketing study, which helped them gain all this information about expected sales and costs and all of that. Uh, please understand that marketing study costs and R&D costs, these are sunk costs. Uh, these are costs that have already been incurred, uh, which means that when we go ahead to calculate the NPV or the IRR or the payback of the project, we don't account for these costs as part of our cash flow calculations. I won't go into the details of all the different pieces of information that are given. My point is that you're given all the information to figure out the incremental financial cash flows or free cash flows from the project. And I'm not going through the detail of this setup. This is the standard way in which we calculate financial cash flows as EBIT into one minus the tax rate plus depreciation minus CapEx minus changes in networking capital. The main point of this video is that once you have the incremental cash flows as a function of your inputs, and please understand that you do need to have a separate section for all your inputs because you want your calculations to be cell referenced to these inputs. So for example, when I've calculated revenue from the new golf clubs, it is calculated as price times the expected sales. So I've cell referenced here. As you will see, this is going to be very, very important for our scenario analysis computations that we will do. The main point of scenario analysis is that it says that, look, at the end of the day, these NPVs and the IRRs are a function of the underlying inputs. If your inputs will change, naturally, financial cash flows will change, and as a result, your NPV will change. And so scenario analysis tries to say, okay, how do our metrics change with different inputs? Specifically, in this question, we were asked, well, first, what are the NPV, the IRR, and the paybacks, which we've calculated, but then suppose you feel that the units, the price, the variable cost, and fixed costs are accurate to within only plus minus 10%. What are your best case and worst case NPVs? Okay, so this means that these values right here, these are only accurate to plus minus 10%. Our best case scenario would be where our prices are 10% higher, our sales are 10% higher, but our variable costs are 10% lower and our fixed costs are 10% lower. And similarly, our worst case NPV would correspond to a situation where, well, the opposite is true. Our prices and our sales are 10% lower, but our costs are 10% higher. So basically, here's what we're going to do. So at the top here, you'll see this tab called data. Click on that and then click on what if analysis. And there you'll see scenario manager. So click on that. Now here it says that you don't have any scenarios right now. We're going to change that. So we click on add. 
Now, the first thing it asks you is like, what would you like your scenario to be called? Now, the very first scenario that you want to create, call it your base case or default scenario. Uh, there's a reason for that, which will become clear in just a few minutes. But this is the very first scenario that I suggest you create. Now, the next thing it asks you is changing cells. Scenario manager is basically asking you which cells can change under the different scenarios. Here, you want to highlight all those cells that can potentially change, which are, in this case, your prices, your expected sales, but then also your variable costs and your fixed costs. These are all the cells that are used for your financial cash flow calculations. In other words, they are cell referenced here, which is why whenever they change, your NPV and your IRR changes as well. Once you've done that, you click on OK, and now Scenario Manager says, OK, in your base case scenario, what values would you like me to keep for these specific cells? And guess what? These cells are already reflecting your base case values. Cell B13, for example, has 1,010, which is your base case price for the new golf clubs. So you just click on OK, says, you know what? This is my base case and change none of the values. So OK. But now you want to create another scenario. So click on Add again. And this time, you want to create your worst case scenario. So now when you press OK, it asks you what are the values that you would like to see in these cells, which represents your worst case. Now, I have separately recorded the worst case values for these different inputs. So for example, in our worst case, our price would be 10% lower, which would be 909. Our expected sales would be 10% lower, which would be 45,900. And so basically, I want to proceed with changing the values here to represent my worst case. So I'm going to do that. OK, so now I've changed all these inputs to reflect my worst case. My costs are 10% higher. My prices and expected sales are 10% lower. So now if I click on OK, sure enough, my worst case scenario has been created. I can add another one. This would be my best case. And again, when I'll click on OK, Excel will ask me, OK, what values do you want these cells to show in your best case, which, as we know, is going to be 10% higher in prices and sales and 10% lower in my costs. OK, so now I press OK. And now our best case scenario is created as well. So here's the thing. If I now click on my worst case and then click on show, it will literally change the values here in my input section to show the values corresponding to my worst case scenario. And naturally, my NPV is going to change, my IRR is going to change, my payback is going to change accordingly. And similarly, if I go click on Scenario Manager one more time, and this time ask, uh, you know, what is going to be my best case and click on show, naturally, uh, numbers are going to be very, very nice. Notice that with Scenario Manager, you have to be careful because a Scenario Manager literally goes into your input section and changes the values from which your calculations are being done. And if you have a lot of scenarios, in addition to worst case or best case, you have like optimistic case or pessimistic case or conservative case or whatever. Uh, after you've run a lot of scenarios, you can forget where you started from, which is why it is always a good idea to have your base case first. And that's why I had my base case scenario created first. The second thing is that you can also neatly present your ideas uh, using Scenario Manager as well. Specifically, you can run this summary function. When you click on summary, it asks you, you know, what are the different things that you would like me to summarize across these different scenarios? So which results would you like to see? Uh, I would really like to see my NPV, my IRR, and my payback across these different scenarios. Uh, I can do a pivot table report as well, but this is beyond the scope of this uh, video. So I just say, you know what, I'd like to summarize these results. Now you click on OK. And it will generate a new sheet for you in which it will show you your different inputs, the values that correspond to your best case, your worst case, and your uh, base case scenarios here. And then the NPVs, the IRRs, and the payback 
in these different situations. What is uh, not so nice about this table is that when you look at it, uh, it's very hard to remember, at least, uh, at least for me, uh, you know, what is in cell B20? What is in cell B16? What is B35, 36, 37? Uh, you can actually change that. If you go back to your sheet where you're doing all the calculations, uh, you can actually label these cells differently. For example, this cell right here, which shows NPV, um, this is B35. Uh, at the top here, you can label it differently. You can call it NPV. Uh, and similarly, you can call this uh, IRR. And uh, similarly, you can call this your uh, payback. And so you can do this for all your inputs as well. Uh, and now, if you're going to run the scenario manager and then the summary uh, for the same uh, cells, you will see that it changes uh, the labels of these uh, cells to reflect the labels well that you've given them. And so this can uh, make your uh, table look, uh, well, a little bit neater. So there you go. Scenario analysis for a capital budgeting project using Excel. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning!